uh, welcome. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm uh, James Lanette. I'm the head of the School of Physics. We've had the formal graduation already. This is a very informal event, just a short prize giving, and uh, here's some thoughts from some members of the graduating class uh, about how they feel about their, their degree and uh, their time here in Bristol. Uh, and then we'll move after this, we'll go downstairs to the Enderby Room and have a celebration, a glass of wine, all of us again. Okay, so um, before other people's uh, thoughts, let me just give a few of my own thoughts on the last year. I uh, was just thinking of the sort of proverb, uh, may you live in interesting times, and how interesting the last year or so has been. And certainly for the, the wider world, but also the world of universities, and particularly the University of Bristol, is a very interesting time. And I think interesting for physics as well in the last, you know, since you came here as students, since you started here, there's a, a number of things have gone forward in physics which are quite amazing, I think. So uh, let me just say a few words about my views of things um, very briefly. So, of course, we've had an election, and just a year ago today, I woke up, I was giving a lecture in Germany, and woke up to find that we were leaving the European Union, a bit of a surprise. My European colleagues were a bit astounded, uh, but you know, whatever one's views of those things, I think European collaboration in universities and the academic world is extremely important, as is, as is international collaboration, of course, across across continents as well. So, um, and of course, uh, I just want to say that you know, the, the number of students here in the room who have come from European countries, who are the citizens of European countries, have taken degrees in Bristol. They're very valued and a very valuable part of our, of our degree. A number of our students here today have spent a year in Europe as part of their studies, and I hope that's been a very valuable experience for them. I'm sure it has been. And uh, so I think the, these links that we have are extremely important, let alone research money and, and members of staff who are from European countries. Uh, another thing that's sort of been in the news, but sort of a little bit hidden by all the election and all the stuff has been, um, there's been a, a bill through Parliament in the last year, and in fact it got through the day before the election, Parliament closed for the election, uh, which is going to be transforming higher education in many ways. And many of the students will know about this because of uh, discussion about the NSS and whether students boycotted it. I know most of you in this room didn't do your NSS return, which is, uh, we normally would be sending out lots of emails to do your NSS email. This is the National Student Survey for the parents, and it's a student satisfaction survey. And uh, this is now part of something called the Teaching Excellence Framework, which is a national review of teaching and the quality of teaching at universities. And uh, the um, result of that was announced just after the election, which among other universities, Bristol was awarded a silver, which is, the, so the, it was like the Olympics, bronze, silver or gold, and uh, I think we were reasonably confident with the silver. Um, I think one thing I want to say about it, it's not a single competition. So a bit like the Olympics, you know, you've got different competitions. You can get a bronze in the 100 meters sprint, or a silver in, in the swimming or gold in gold or something else. So if another university says, oh, we got a gold, you have to be really careful. They weren't necessarily judged against Bristol. Bristol was judged in a very elite group of universities, not against other, other universities. So, uh, so the, the, just to have a little bit of a warning about what that means if you, you think that that's a, that's a bad mark for Bristol. But I hope you've enjoyed the teaching you've had here and you found it very interesting and productive in reflection. I think it's uh, been an interesting, Sorry. interesting year in the, in the, in the, or year or so in the, in the world of physics. Um, you know, lots of things have happened that since you, you came to university, just think of some of the big things that have happened in physics. You know, when you came to university, we had no idea that uh, we could detect gravity waves. We had a good idea gravity waves existed. They were predicted by Albert Einstein more than 100 years ago. But uh, the fact that they could actually be observed, we could detect black holes millions of light years away colliding with each other, is an amazing discovery. And I think uh, we've had now what, three of these events recorded, and, uh, and that's an amazing thing it's happening in the world of physics. Picking another example from astrophysics, you know, when you came to university, we had no idea what Pluto looked like. The surface of Pluto was just a smudge in a telescope, the best telescope, like Hubble, 
the surface of Pluto was just a sort of sludge. Now we know it's got mountains, it's got glaciers, it's all of that stuff. So, you know, amazing things happen very, very quickly in science sometimes. Just to pick an example from my own field, when I started myself as a student, we didn't know that, any, that anything could become a superconductor above 20 Kelvin. As of about two years ago, we now know that there are superconductors with over 200 Kelvin, which is minus 70 centigrade, so we go pretty much a close to room temperature. So these sort of discoveries are happening all the time, and some of them get in the big news, others that you perhaps will only appreciate as a physics student or physics graduate, and I'm sure whatever you're doing in life after today, after you're, you're, whether you're doing further study or some other career, whenever you hear about some announcement about physics, you'll say, wow, I, I know what that is, I, I studied a bit about that, I just know I can appreciate what's going on in physics a little bit more. And things coming up, who knows, dark matter, dark energy, more about the history of the universe, new materials, new energy sources, things like that are, are certainly all happening. So um, I think uh, without further ado, what I'll do is uh, move on to the next star. And a number of us, those are just some of my thoughts about the last few years, but some of our students have kindly volunteered to give their thoughts about uh, their time in Bristol, and uh, we're going to move on to the first of those. So, so two of our students, Astrid Blee and Hannah Schutter, will speak together. So are they able to come down? Yeah. Yeah. Speech. Um, I'm Astrid Lee. I'm graduating as a fourth year from the MSI programme with a study in continental Europe. And my name's Hannah Shooter, and I'm uh, graduating with Masters in Straight Physics. To a few of you, it will be a shock that I have the first name. <laughs> well, we may seem like well-organised, mature young ladies, um, so it may be a surprise to some of you that the majority of this speech was actually written last week in a hot tub in Wales. <laughs> We're adults, I promise. So, Roger sent out an email to all the fourth years asking if anyone wants to give commencement speech, and precisely no one replied. Yeah. Good job, us. <laughs> what held us back was the fact that we were asked to speak about the experiences of the cohort, and, you know, we didn't feel like our experiences were particularly typical. I mean, most of our cohort we only know by description. Like, really well-dressed guy. Yeah, a massive rucksack girl. Gap your trials, man. Exactly. Like, how could we talk about the typical experiences of the cohort when we didn't know most of their names? But we thought that maybe that's the whole point, is that we all had such different experiences of our time here at Bristol. It's particularly obvious between the two of us because we actually came from the same sixth form. Some people have rumoured that we're actually the same person. And yet we've come out with vastly different experiences of our time at university and definitely different stories to tell. So here are our experiences of studying physics at Bristol. The good, the bad, and the very alcohol induced. <laughs> First year for us started in September 2013. We arrived bright eyed, bushy tailed. Um, we'd agreed that we wouldn't live in the same halls of residence in the hope that we might branch out and make some different friends. Unfortunately, we came to physics and made exactly the same group of friends, so that worked really well for us. It was a good job, yeah. In first year, I joined the Stage Technicians Association, which has been a huge part of my time here at Bristol. The STA is a society that provides backstage and technical support for all the performances that university societies put on. And in first year, I wasn't having a very good time in halls, so it was really nice to be accepted by a big group of people, and soon I was spending all my time doing as many shows as I could, and spending all my time living in the theatre. A particularly memorable night out with the STA ended at 2 o'clock in the morning, when my room door broke. So I had to sleep under my ironing board, in a shared kitchen, until 7am, when the maintenance man could come out. But I did still make my 9am, so I thought like that was a win. <laughs> I didn't really do a lot in first year because I was quite preoccupied by labs. Um, I'd never done <laughs> experimental work before, and I spent a lot of my time just mentally screaming, actually. Um, however, I learned the first rule of labs, which is, you know, if you pretend you know what you're doing, you can generally get through, and it'll be alright in the end. Also, second rule of labs, don't date your lab partner. <laughs> that was an important lesson, wasn't it? <laughs> Second year, um, we'll be honest, it wasn't a high point for either of us. 
Um, we were both having a bit of a tough time, um, and we didn't exactly deal with it particularly well, or like particularly good adults. No, I did five out of six of the main STA shows that year, and actually lived in the theatre, whereas I picked up five jobs at the same time as January exams. Yeah, it was a, you know, it was a cracking year. But no. we were well enough again by June to go and see Taylor Swift in Hyde Park, which was fantastic. And given the fact that we passed all our exams, we made it through, we thought that, you know, maybe we could actually do this physics business after all. The third year brought a few changes for us though. Yeah, I decided I should probably take my degree a little bit more seriously. So I decided to do a lot less shows and spend significantly less amount of time in the pub. It improved my degree no end. Third year for me was the first time that I actually felt like I had a handle on my life at university. I had finally worked out how to revise for exams. I'd worked out doing coursework the night before I was due in. It was not the best idea. And I was enjoying all my optional units that I was taking. And it was fantastic. I wound up taking two thirds of my units in first term. So in second term, I decided to pick up a few easy STA shows. Because that went well. I never learn. Um, the first show I did was the dance show, which was a bigger show than we normally do, in a shorter time, in a space we don't use. So that was the most stressful nine days of my life. But the second show I did, which was West Side Story, will be the highlight of my time with the STA here in Bristol. Um, unfortunately, these two shows were right together alongside doing two sets of lectures. So at the end of an immensely tiring five weeks, I'm with a broken thumb, I boarded a plane to Germany to come and visit me. <laughs> I decided at the end of second year that perhaps a change of, change of scenery was required, so I moved to Germany. Everyone does that, right? Um, but I started studying my third year at the Technical University of Darmstadt, um, which is a tiny town south of Frankfurt in Germany. It was amazing, in short. Um, I met some incredible people. Not as great as ours. True, but they were all right, you know, as substitutes. And I did learn some pretty cool physics, actually. I started learning that optics was a thing, and it was a thing that I actually really enjoyed. So for the first time, I started thinking about doing a PhD after I graduated. Um, I mean, I did also do some pretty horrendous theoretical physics units, and my exams didn't finish until the end of August, but I did get a nice six weeks off in the middle of the term, something we don't get here in Bristol, um, so I spent a lot of time asleep, I spent a lot of time at the pub, and we also had three days skiing in the charming Bavarian village of Nesselwang. It indeed was charming. <laughs> Fourth year was a bit of a shock to us, actually, that we were somehow in the last year of our education, that we were somehow going to graduate, um, and, you know, it was an interesting experience. Um, we mostly did our research projects this year. Yes, my research project was a mixed experience. I really enjoyed carrying out my own research, and I was really interested in the physics I was simulating. However, I did spend 90% of my time screaming at my computer because my simulation kept exploding. Although I did get some results, just in the last 12 hours of experimental work. I was only a little bit stressed by it. It was fine. <laughs> On the other hand, um, I really enjoyed my research project to the point where I've been convinced to do a PhD here, actually. Um, and mine was optics-based, something I discovered I enjoyed, and it mostly involved squinting at a computer and then squinting in a darkened room for that screwdriver I swore I'd put down on the counter just five seconds ago. So this year brought up, some, brought up some other changes for us as we lived together for the first time this year with two other girls. And we felt like we had the true student experience. We had damp, we had racks, um, we also had rosemary infused olive oil on the side. All students have that, yeah? I think so, yeah. But for the first time, our student house actually felt like a home. Um, and we discovered that even though, you know, there were definitely ups and downs this year, I mean, advanced quantum for one, um, <laughs> but it's a lot easier to deal with stress when you come home to people who care and who have maybe baked you a cake when you feel sad. What we've learned, no, sorry, that's not where we're going. Um, after all this though, however, as I said, I've been convinced to do a, stay and do a PhD, which I am really looking forward to. Um, I'm also moving back into Manor, so it's going to be like first year, all over again. Whereas I'm off to go away to my degree for a year by riding horses. Sorry, Mum. Um, I've had a fantastic time at Bristol, and my final year I think has been the best year of my degree. But like everyone else who's just completed their final year, I found it incredibly stressful, and I want a year out before continuing my education with PGCE. Yeah. But, what we've learned from physics, however, is that it's not all about moments of inertia, still can't calculate one of those, and that not every answer can be found in Tipler and Mosca, aka the Bible. No, what we've learned amongst the thousands of calculations, hundreds of lecture notes, and so many copies from FizzBar, is that there is no substitute for hard work, but by working hard, we can achieve anything we want. 
There were points for both of us where we thought that we would never graduate with good degrees, and yet here we are today, dressed like bats, with two of the most expensive bits of paper in the world that will allow us to do anything that we want to do. We also learned after three pints we have to send out a rescue mission for this one. Rude. I mean, it's not untrue, but rude. <laughs> Along the way, though, obviously, you know, we didn't get here by ourselves. So we'd like to say thank you very much to all the people who have helped us along the way, whether that's personal tutors and project supervisors, um, lecturers, or friends who let you look at their code at 4 a.m. Also, thanks to parents, you know, you're pretty good. Um, and we really appreciate the fact that you don't complain when we come home and eat all the food and then fall asleep for 12 hours. We really do appreciate it. We really do. A special shout out, however, to Barb Perks, Queen of the Physics Department, who has personally saved both of us on multiple occasions, and also to Rob Jewer, who has done a fantastic job of organising our lives this year. So, thank you very much for letting us ramble on about our time here at university, um, and in the immortal words of Elle Woods, WE DID IT! <laughs>
for their hard work and everyday diligence, without which none of this would be possible. Thank you, goodbye, and good luck. Thank you, Gregory. That's very, very, very moving, yes. So now we're going to move on to the prize giving stage. So we're going to award some prizes to some of our undergraduate students, but then also to some of our teaching staff. Uh, so we'll start with the undergraduates. If your name is cool, please come down to the front and we'll take your, present you with a prize and also take a photo. So, uh, good. So we start with the Pew Prize for outstanding contribution to the life of the school and the wider student community. And this has been awarded to Alexandra Revel. Alexandra. <laughs> so just to say, Alexandra has been a warm and friendly face on visit days, consistently representing being an outstanding representative of the School of Physics and the University of Bristol. <laughs> the MSI Norman Thompson Project Prize is awarded for the best final year MSI project. Uh, two students are receiving this award jointly this year, and they are Matt Briscoe for his project Modeling Hydrodynamic Synchronization, and Rebecca Millington for her project Calculating the Coulomb Energy of the Nucleus in the Context of the Skir Model. So if you could come down. Actually, so Rebecca is an absolute student. <laughs> She's a maths physics student and her graduation was a couple of days ago, so she did get the prize as well at, uh, at the, a different event. Okay, so um, the BSc Norman Thompson Project Prize is awarded to the best BSc project or equivalent. And this year it's been awarded to Angus Bridges. Angus isn't here. But. Okay, it was awarded a mark of 89% for a dissertation entitled Iridescence and Control of the Colour in Animals and Plants Using Nanophotonic Structures. Okay, so sadly Angus cannot be here today, but please give him a round of applause. Okay, it's more to come. The Winston Capital Project Capital Management Prize is awarded for outstanding project work in astrophysics. And Harry Birch has won the prize for MSI level project, X-ray variability from accreting black holes. So Harry. <laughs> is the Winter Capital Management Prize at BSc level for his project, Radio Survey of the Char MP X-ray Sources. So George could not be present today to collect his prize, but let's please give him a round of applause as well. <laughs> the Peter Fowler Memorial Prize is for consistently excellent performance and it is to be awarded to, today to two students, Ralph Wellington and Jake Tommy. this 
year is awarded to a student who has shown great per perseverance, dedication and maturity while studying for his degree at the same time as raising a young family. Uh, please, Ben Carter, can you come collect your prize? above for their final year project unit are awarded commendations. Uh, there's well too many to have them all come down to the front, so we won't ask you to come down to the front, but I'll read the names and uh, afterwards, if you come to find Robert, he will uh, uh, give you the commendation certificate. I'll be in the Enderby room. Okay. <laughs> so I'll read the names by the project unit and I'll ask for a round of applause at the end of each unit. Okay, so there's several different units here. So the MSI 60 credit point unit for projects has achieved, the following students have achieved a commendation. Harry Birch, Suraj Budia, Astrid Lee, Joe Bocking, David Bray, Matt Briscoe, Laura Compton, Robbie Cox, Joel Greer, Eddie Harris Lee, Luke Corley, Niall Mulligans, Carlo Page, Gabriel Penn, Hannah Saltford, Will Slug, Suck, Sarah Timpson, Ralph Wellington, and Sherilyn Wright. So, applaud them. <laughs> For the MSI 30 credit point unit, the following students achieved accommodation. Rhea Alexander-Turner, Ben Camel, Hannah Harding, Rebecca Millington, Samuel Norrington, Benjamin Parr, Tom Purves, Mizzy Usek, and Victoria Zekol. Okay, thank you. For the BSc 30 credit point project, the following students achieved accommodation. Joe Askey, Angus Bridges, Edmund Cherry, Eric Haggerton cassas Amelia Kisaganga, Sean O'Gara, George Presland, Angus Sibbery, Joe Spillman, Oliver Warren, Samuel Yarland. Credit point BSc Physics Education Unit. Uh, the following students achieved accommodation Jack Preston. Thank you. And finally, for the BSc Project Dissertation, uh, Bethany Laughlin and Ben Reynolds Wilborn won this day. So that completes the awards to the students, but we also have some awards that the students have, have, have uh, uh, nominated for staff for prizes. So we have a few staff prizes to that. So these were awarded by the undergraduate body in recognition for the excellent teaching they've received on certain specific units. So the teaching year for the third year this year is jointly awarded. And first I'll award to Chris Bell for a solid state physics unit. to award for third year course uh, uh, the award to Dr. John Fellows for his teaching on air, water, fire and earth unit. Sven Friedemann 
for his teaching of the unit magnetism and superconductivity. Okay, so thank you everybody. I'd like to congratulate all the students again, and uh, now I'll ask our Director of Studies, Professor Stephen Dugdale, to say a few words. Thank you, James. So, it's only nine months ago that many of you were actually in this room at eight o'clock in the morning as I was trying to teach you solid state physics. Maybe not as many of you as there are today. <laughs> Maybe not looking as bright and enthusiastic as you are today. Looking forward to that warming Prosecco. But it's still fantastic to see um, that you all um, come back to Bristol to attend the Physics Department um, graduation ceremony um, and spend some time this, this afternoon. So I, I would just like to say that when we do give a lecture in a, a theatre that's not entirely full, one of the saving graces these days is something called Media Site, which captures the lecture. And then students can watch it again, usually at about, I think, 1.4 is the favourite speed to watch the lectures again. And so we can console ourselves that maybe you're enjoying us um, in the privacy of your own homes. <laughs> So we're here today to celebrate your achievements. But as we heard from the Vice Chancellor this morning, people around you, of course, have played a really significant role. And within the School of Physics, we really are very fortunate to have such a fantastic undergraduate support team that really is the envy of the rest of the university. So it's my great pleasure, on behalf of the School of Physics, and of course, of course, on behalf of all you new undergraduates, to thank Matt, Rosie, and Rob. And I think of those three, only Rob is here today. He's just nipped out. And he's just nipped out. So it's <laughs> getting even better. I'm going to award, in absentia, <laughs> three boxes of chocolates to each of our, our fantastic undergraduate team. Now, many of you will have realised that, of course, there's somebody else who I've not mentioned so far. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about Bob. But not in my words, in your words. No matter how big or small, Barb will always help in whatever way she can with any problem, academic or personal. She always has a smile on her face. She's approachable and friendly. She's the best. Barb is a shining example of what it means to not just be good at what you do, but to do it with pride, dignity and positivity that is infectious to everyone she supports. Barbara Perks popularly known amongst the students as Babe Rupperks, <laughs> is the single most hard-working member of staff I've come across in my three years at university. She works late nights, has an incredible knowledge of the university, and always knows how to resolve our issues. She works tirelessly for our society, chaos, and believe me, chaos often lives up to their name. <laughs> She works tirelessly for our society, Chaos, from sending out emails on our behalf to odd tasks like finding out who has a spare whiteboard that could be donated to us. Bob always knows who I need to talk to, is always smiling, and always followed up when she said, I'll sort it. Bob really is the mother of the School of Physics. Again, <laughs> bear with me for a second. <laughs> Bob, if you could come down.
much. So, what's next for all of you? Many of you, of course, already know what you'll be doing. Some of you are still in that plan, uh, that plan making phase. Now, the career service is open to all of you for the next three years. So please do make the most of it, even if you've already secured that first position. Remember that these days, the current estimate for people of your generation is that you'll have 10 to 15 jobs in your lifetime. And do stay in touch. You can follow physics on Twitter. <laughs> you can join the physics group on LinkedIn. For those of you who don't know what LinkedIn is, it's kind of like a grown-up version of Facebook. <laughs> Fewer photographs of drunken nights out, and much more space to advertise the vast range of skills you've picked up during your physics degree. So, that's it from me, except to say just a couple of things about how we're going to leave the room. So, as James mentioned, we're going to invite you to have a drink with us down in the end of your room. <laughs> There are a lot of you here, there's a staircase that's incredibly narrow, so it may take a few minutes to go down there. Um, and so just bear with us, and don't get crushed in the race for a cold drink. And once you do have a drink, please do go outside to the lawn and garden, enjoy some beautiful English sunshine and the views of our physics department. But do remember, if you take your glass outside, please do bring it back to us. <laughs> Finally, as you go down the stairs, then Ben, Ben Morn, will be handing you one of these cards. It's a chance to win a hundred pound Amazon voucher to offset that huge investment in your, in your degree. <laughs> um, but it, it just means that we can keep in touch with you and put forward career, career opportunities very easily to you. So please do fill it in and there'll be a box downstairs, I'll just hand it to one of us downstairs at the end of your room and we'll, we'll make sure you're entered into that. Fantastic prize for all for that £100 Amazon fracture. So thank you very much um, and do enjoy the rest of the afternoon with us.